Friends, this is Christopher Sarda, Chaos and Comics. Uh, you can find me at Chaos and Comics on Instagram and Twitter. And I just did a decent sized stack. This is probably coming up a few days later. And we're going to do a lightning review for another uh, semi sized stack. Uh, let's do it. First up, Alfred Pennyworth, RIP number one. Um, I, I like that they kept Alfred dead. It, you know, when, when Tom King killed him, we find out later that DC liked the idea uh, that there was probably going to be a reset anyway. Um, who knows if that still happened with uh, Didio or Didio leaving or however you say his name. But uh, DC wanted that to happen. It was cool. Tinian, Carolina to Chris, Tinian. No, I, I fucking, God damn it. Tinian's the wrong way. Then when he told you how to say it, you kept saying it wrong. <laughs> Tynan. So anyway. So James Tynan the fourth, he's also been interviewed. So if you looked up interviews, you hear that him saying his name. Um, and then Tinian's the normal way. And uh, and hey, so James Tynan took over the book, and uh, and as far as I could tell, it's been cool. I mean, there's been a lot of like spec stuff, but the people that are reading it seem to like it. I'll come back around to it. I was a little bored of Batman. I'll read Bat Cat, and then I, I just wanted to put a. A little bit of a, a pause on, on the Batman stuff as much as I can because there's so much of it, you know. But I did read this because it continued on. Uh, James Tynan and Tomasi wrote great stories. Art good through the whole thing, and it really is it really is nice. So long as you don't do so long as you don't do the he's not dead he'll come back thing through the whole time, and you realize that the people in here think he's dead, then uh, then it becomes very enjoyable, very heart touching, very sad. So um, exactly what it was going for. So it was a good book. Next up is Ghost Rider 6. I gotta say, I really enjoy this. It really should be called Ghost Riders. Um, I guess sort of. I guess Ke D Danny Ketch the last couple of issues hasn't been one. But uh, I really like that I don't know whether this is a, a Danny Ketch book or if this is a Johnny Blaze book. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the other video is that the Mephisto stuff is just all different throughout Marvel Comics. It, Feels like a lot of people have set him free. It feels like a lot of people are dealing with him when he's already set free. Who knows? But since this is an ongoing and this is you know with characters that have had a long history in the Marvel universe and haven't disappeared like say Conan has. Uh, what's the other book that has Mephisto? There's another book that has Mephisto in it too. We're gonna we're gonna say this one's true. Uh, and uh, there's some pretty cool sort of dark demony stuff going on here. Uh, I bought the wrong cover. I didn't want the Spider Woman cover, but nonetheless, I have it. So uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. Spirit of Corruption, Spirit of Vengeance, stuff, stuff in Limbo, Blackheart's coming in. This is, um, you know, this is Ed Brisson just pulling at my heartstrings with a Heart of Darkness two, Heart of Darkness two part two. So you got some Wolverine, and you got, uh, uh, and you got Punisher in here, and then Doctor Strange is in here which there's a cool Doctor Strange crossover from a few years ago and even before that. So it, I think this one is one where I'm a fan of the music. So uh, I can like maybe stuff that sounds a little bit more generic to other people. But if you're not a fan of the music, this could be decent to maybe you wouldn't like it. But I like it. I've stuck with it. And I'm, and I'm going to stick with it. Here's Stealth. Um, this is a, this was surprisingly good. It looks like you're just like looking at a Dark Hawk meets Falcon sort of crossover in here. But um, number one, Skybound, an image in general, like book design, they're knocking it out of the park, uh, especially Skybound. But uh, I've just seen like really nice looking designs uh, on books lately. Uh, Excellence was great. Decorum, which we'll see in a little bit, is great. Uh, the design for um, Tartarus is really good. So it just gives, it adds to the experience. I don't know if it makes it worth, what was this one? This one should have been $3.99. Uh, yeah, this one's $3.99. I don't know if it, I don't know like if it's cart, it's better than cardstock, I'll tell you that. I'd pay a dollar more for a really well-designed book that, uh, you know, that affects the story like the art does than I would just a cardstock cover. Um, but for the most part, they don't. The only time they charge more than the $3.99 if it is actually bigger than normal book. So uh, this is really fun, you know, a good little twist there. Maybe, maybe you catch it, maybe you don't, but it was written in a way where if you let yourself believe, uh, it's, it's a cool twist. 
Probably my favorite thing about this is I really like when a writer is effective at writing a city, whether that city's made up, you know, or, or that city's you know, like Gotham or Metropolis. You know, I could see good writers writing that. That's you know, bright New York and dark New York, essentially, right? Or when they write a real city. And uh, I can think of a ton of books. Um, uh, I think his name's Zephon. I haven't read it in a long time. But uh, wrote Barcelona, beautiful. Barcelona was almost a character in this book that just came through my mind. And there's plenty of other ones. And that is um, Costa's, Costa's goal here uh, with stealth, you know, in the context of a superhero book that he's going he's gonna to write Detroit. And he, he's make sure that you know that it's set in Detroit with, you know, pictures like that. So uh, this is one I was going to even skip. I wasn't even going to buy number one. I rolled in, grabbed it off the shelf. Uh, but I'm definitely going to buy this trade. So I'm not going to buy number two or anything like that. But we are going we are going trade route with this. But we did get number one, and it was very, very, very good. Hey, Thor number four. So Donny Cates hasn't got any worse writing. The book is still good. It's as well written as one, two, and three. Nick Klein's killing it. I hope Nick Klein and another write, uh, artist I'm going to talk about in a minute, uh, I hope they get really famous because I enjoy their art. Um, in the context of comics, get really famous, which means not that famous, really. But I hope they get some good work. Um, Nick Klein is now seems to be discovered because Thor is one of the bigger books. I hope Juan Ferreira, who I hope I'm saying his name right, um, gets discovered too because he's doing cool things in Spider-Man Noir. So art is still beautiful. Donny Cates is still a great writer. We're just in the fourth issue, and you know this is where you start feeling even. There's nothing wrong with the book. Um, but I, I know where it's going, sort of. We're, it's taken four issues for Galactus to find these planets and actually, you know, deal with them. Had a few fights in the middle, you know. And, uh, and it leaves us with something pretty cool. Um, this is a minor spoiler. I don't really like to do spoilers on the Lightning reviews and the regular reviews I do. But, you know, you know what was going to happen. Um, I can't even remember what it was called. The Black Winter. Now, if this has nothing to do with Noel, then it's derivative. It's another black darkness coming to get us all. I mean, that's what Noel is. He's the king of the darkness. He was there before Galactus's universe ended and, you know, the new universe started and Thor beat him up. Uh, so if it has nothing to do with it, then Donny Cates is being derivative. Uh, you know, it's another darkness thing coming to destroy the whole universe. Uh, if it does, then I want to see how it overlaps and what they both mean together. And, and I'm sure something cool will happen of it. Um, if he's able to make them overlap, but keep the book separate, then that's cool too. That'll be interesting. But I mean, really, I mean, Thor, Donny Cates already wrote Thor into the, uh, into the lore of Noel. I mean, he's the original ass kicker of Noel. So it's got to cross over, especially when they do their big event that's coming, you know, in, I would say 2021, where Noel's, you know, kicking ass and stuff, and something's going on. I mean, Thor's going to be involved in that. It's got to be. Uh, New Mutants, number nine. So a lot of us love this cover. Jacko, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He's on my channel often. I interact with him a lot on Instagram. Hates this cover. Called it one of the worst on Instagram. But I love it. I love really high concept, weird stuff. Um, and this seems to be going the route uh, of, a, of a horror uh, book, at least a horror arc, which, you know, if you watch the New Mutants trailer, literally, what was it, three years ago, it looked like a horror movie. I don't know if that's the way it's still going to be, but, you know, you get that feel, sort of a, a cosmic horror thing going on here, and uh, and I still liked it. It was good. You know, I, I, I'm following along. Seems like there's lots of New Mutants. Now we're getting Children of the Atom, too. I really want to find out more about the Sextant, and I hope that's where we're going here, because they... Um, you know, they broke into the MLF a little bit too. They, they weren't very nice. So the book is good. I like all the Don, Don of X titles, e, even this one. People are really into this one. And if I were to review this one alone, what I would do is, you know, I talk about the story, um, how it relates to, Don, to all the X-Men stuff is great. It looks like this is sort of a prelude to the, whatever it was called, the Sword of X, um, cable number one is. But uh, what I'd really like to do is, uh, is compare uh, Mike Del Mundo's art to maybe something like Christian Ward. And Christian Ward seems to be like my base um, painterly guy. And 
I'm not sure that this is painted, but it has that feel, almost a cleaner feel than, than uh, Christian Ward's uh, wider brush strokes. We could also look at the way he did Thor. I think he, you know, I think it was less, I think it was, um, I think it had more of a, a cartoony feel in Thor than it does here. This has, if it's cartoony, more animated. So uh, I enjoyed that. I mean, my biggest thing with art isn't how skilled you are as an artist. I don't really care about that. I like to see your perspective. I like a different style. Even if you suck, you know, if you if I know who the characters are and I can follow the story and you and you're not good at drawing feet or something, if you have a perspective and you have a a way to look at a character, then I'm all for it. And as I get more used to you, I start thinking to myself, well, geez, uh, I'd like to see Del Mundo's um, cable, for example. Then it gets even, I'm not even, I thought this might not have been Del Mundo, these drawings here. This crab and stuff, it doesn't look like what uh, I'm used to seeing from him, but perhaps it is. Uh, I really want to show you the spoiler at the end, but if I review this book alone, I'll show you that spoiler, because that's what we do up in here. So, let's continue uh, the whole, you know, the whole Exhumen shtick, and, uh, and, uh, you know, Hickman's trying to stuff in a lot of X-Men history into, into what he's doing here. Uh, here he's, he's uh, stuffing in the brood, and it feels like this should continue next issue, but it probably won't because it's Jonathan Hickman. You're going to get a little bit here and there. In fact, I can't even, I think it, no, it didn't really even end on a, it feels like it might have ended on a cliffhanger, but then you know who you're, you know who you're reading. You're reading Hickman, so. Ended up with two covers of this. Um... Juan Ferre, so Margaret Stoll wrote a cool book, but Ron, Juan Ferre's art is just incredible here. You know, it's heavy on the black and whites. Uh, I thought Punisher Kill Crew, as dumb as you might think that book is, um, uh, probably showed what he can do a little bit better. But then again, I think if you're just doing something that's like 90%, you know, 250 colors, like shades of gray, black, white, and shades of gray, that's almost uh, more skill to be able to tell the story. In that way, you know, there are touches of color here and there. Mary Jane's head is, is uh, hair is red, for example, in this. But it's just so, it's just so pretty. He just draws so pretty. And um, someone told me he's Brazilian, but it turns out he's Argentinian, which is where my family is from. So even better. I can even be nationalist. Anyway, I had, these are like at the bottom, but I, I should have, uh, I'm running out of time on my phone. I guess I should have deleted some videos. So that means that I should just do individual reviews of these, like the gods are telling me to do it. So uh, I do really want to talk about this, and I really want to talk about this. I could probably talk about them both for five to ten minutes, and that's probably what I'll do later. Anyway, thank you guys for watching at Chaos and Comics on Instagram and Twitter. See you later.